Hi, Fliss. Hi, Heidi. Who was Oscar Cahane then? Well, he was a Canadian artist who made a big impact in his short life. He was born in 1916 in Copenhagen to a German Jewish father and a Roman Catholic mother. And he studied art and design in Europe. He became a professor at the Rotter School of Art in Prague in his early 20s. So very wow, young to early, be doing yeah. that. Uh, his father, Fritz Kahane, was a leading anti-Hitler activist who later published a book in 1939 called Men Against Hitler. So, as you may guess, the family was forced to flee Europe. Yeah. And they were actually on the run, living all over Europe for years. Finally, Oscar escaped to England, only to be imprisoned as an enemy alien. And then he was sent to Canada and, believe it or not, put in a detention center in Sherbrooke, Quebec. Oh, really? And he was only 24 years old. That's a lot to go through in a short period of time. Mm. How did he get out of that situation, the detention camp? Well, a reporter came to his rescue. Yay, Yay reporters! <laughs> uh, she was doing a story on the camp and discovered his skills as an artist, and she ended up getting him work as an illustrator. And so he got out. Wow. And he lived in Montreal and became one of the most successful illustrators in Canada. And he worked for many magazines, including Maclean's and Chatelaine. And then he moved to Toronto in the early 1940s and continued his magazine work there. But he was also painting. Mm. Tell me about his paintings. Okay, well, first of all, I'm going to tell you what they're not like. Okay. <laughs> These are not subdued still lifes or picturesque landscapes or somber portraits. This is expressionist abstract art, so very lively and vibrant. No fruit in a bowl. N- no. no. Well, there could be fruit, but maybe you won't quite see no, it it's that fruit. way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so Jeffrey Spaulding, the chief curator at the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia, is writing a book on Oscar Kahane. So I asked him to describe one of his paintings uh, called Animated Item. It is searing red colors, cerises, magentas, pinks, screaming oranges, and then all offset by uh, complementing strong colors of turquoise. And I think you're inclined to say emerald and jewels and things like that rather than just simply color names. These paintings by Kahane are just so lush and exotic. And I think that's what was so remarkable about them in the 50s. 50s paintings tended to be dark and dour and be the aftermath of World War II and moving into the Cold War. So these paintings are not just simply red. (laughs) They are very distinctly different. They have a different sort of energy and vitality as a consequence. And that's Jeffrey Spaulding, the chief curator at the AGNS. Wow, quite a description. Mm -hmm. How far did Kahane's influence go as an artist? Well, Kahane was a co-founder of a very active, cutting-edge group of abstract painters in Toronto. They were called Painters 11. He was the oldest member of the group, the only one trained in Europe, so they kind of looked up to him. Uh, the fellow members in the group were greatly influenced by his work, but his influence went far beyond that group, and here again is Jeffrey Spaulding. So if the granddaddy is Pollock, let's say, with his gestural um, dripping and uh, movement paintings, then many of the paintings by Painters 11 seem to be within that tradition of gestural abstraction, uh, that it really is about thrusting movements and uh, often shards and pointy bits, <laughs> things that look like they might hurt you if you grab them. Uh, Kahane's work actually starts there, but very quickly becomes uh, really about the glory of color. And he actually becomes the person that basically prefigures the next major movement in painting, which some would refer to as uh, uh, color field painting or stain painting or modernist painting. Wow, so a huge influence then, mm-hmm. obviously. But today we're talking on the 50th anniversary of his death. So what happened? Well, unfortunately, he was killed in a car accident. He was only 40 years old. So that was in Ontario mm. on November 26, 1956. And at the time of his death, art historian Paul Duval wrote, his early death may well have robbed Canada of its potentially greatest painter. And that's a quote. Mm. Now that brings up an interesting question of, you know, if he was so highly regarded in the art world, why do so few Canadians know about him? Well, the biggest reason is that after his death, most of his work stayed with his widow. 
I mean, you can imagine she was quite devastated yeah. and wanted the paintings around her. So not many of the paintings ended up in public galleries. I think there are only maybe 30 mm. paintings in public galleries. So there are many Kahane illustrations out there, but relatively few people have seen his paintings. And, for example, the AGNS doesn't have any Kahane paintings, and I believe the National Gallery only has two oh. on display. Wow. Not very so, many. yeah, and maybe there's 350 paintings in total in existence. No one really knows for sure. What's being done now to boost his profile? Well, as I mentioned, Jeffrey Spaulding is writing a book on Kahane. Right. And this past weekend, several galleries across the country marked the anniversary of his death by putting a painting on display, if they indeed had mm. one to put on display. But also, his son Michael has taken on a mission. He's founded the Kahane Archive and wants to ensure Canadians know about his father's work. And Michael Kahane was in Halifax last week. I had the opportunity to meet with him. He was only 11 years old when his father died, and I asked him what he remembers about Oscar. The house and our milieu was always very alive with visits from other artists and, and spirited conversations. But for me, I think the most uh, imposing thing as a youngster were the two studios. There was a studio for illustration, which was uh, wide open, and everyone was allowed, including the dogs and the cats and, and myself. And uh, Oscar worked there uh, doing illustrations for Maclean's and Chatelaine and so on. There was another studio, which I was never allowed in, where Oscar uh, disappeared to, to paint. And I always wondered about that. Why was it that that door was closed? Why do you think that was? Do you have any insight into that now? When Oscar did his illustrations, uh, he executed them with speed, but not with haste. And there was um, an urgency to deadlines. The paintings uh, didn't have a deadline, and they took a lot out of Oscar. And you can actually see that in his work, that... uh, the the man is so heavily invested in, in each piece. And I think it may be arguable that that's what makes great art. So that's Michael Kahane. And he told me he knew from the day his father died that someday he would take on this mission. Mm. And he actually retired and he moved from England back to Canada to do this. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Okay. And he, he says if anyone knows of any of his father's work that he may not know of, to please get in touch with him. Hmm. What does he plan to do with the artwork that he has in the Kahane Archive? Well, he plans to organize an exhibition or a series of exhibitions of, of the illustrations, and he also wants to exhibit work from the Painters 11 group. Uh, really, what he'd really like to see is his father's paintings on display all the time, mm. as far and wide as possible. That would be great. Well, Fliss, thank you for telling us all about this. You're welcome, Heidi.